We come now to Isaiah chapter 10 with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed, that legalize iniquities, as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, looking forward ultimately to when it will be required by man's law to worship Satan when he appears as the false Christ, which is what the Assyrian was a type of, as well as the king of Babylon. And remember in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, which means confusion, made a decree that whoever refused to fall down and worship the image of gold when all six instruments were sounding, which are symbolic of the six trumpets of deception, they were to be put to death in a burning, fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being types of those of the 7,000 Zadok or 232 of that number, possibly who are the church in Philadelphia that never bow a knee to the image of Baal, that is to say the image of the beast, which will be an image of Satan transmitted throughout the world beginning at 666, to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless, being made widows and orphans, spiritually speaking, at 666, as far as those of the Zadok are concerned, because their family members will have been deceived in the great apostasy, called poor here because in standing against Satan and his one world system, they'll obviously not be partaking of the increase of goods at that time that you can read of in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, but because of what the Holy Spirit will say through those of the church in Philadelphia, many will repent and come out of the confusion, not only the church in Smyrna, who are the 144,000 who will then be in poverty in the eyes of the world, but rich spiritually, as you can see in the ninth verse of Revelation chapter 2, but many out of the other churches will be grafted back into God's family tree also once they repent upon realizing they were deceived at 666, the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And what will ye do in the day of visitation? This being directed at those who don't repent before for the true Christ returns at the woe of the seventh trumpet when the day of the Lord begins, and in the desolation which shall come from far, the desolator being Satan and his role of Antichrist, beginning at the woe of the sixth trumpet, to whom will ye flee for help, and where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. In other words, when they worship Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, they'll be both slain and taken into captivity, spiritually speaking, and if they fail to repent before the seventh angel sounds, they'll go into the millennium with mortal souls as opposed to taking part in the first resurrection into eternal life. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still, because immediately after Satan's 70 evenings as the false Christ, two and a half months in other words, the true Christ returns and the great day of his wrath begins, called also the great tribulation, which is the thousand years, the day of vengeance that begins a half hour after 666, when Satan appears in Jerusalem as the desolator spoken of by Daniel the prophet. O Assyrian, a type of Antichrist, whether it be Tiglath-Pileser or his successors, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. It's God himself who will allow Satan to appear in Jerusalem when all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time. I, meaning God, will send him, meaning Satan, in the ultimate future ascents against an hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like mire in the streets, and again, the king of Assyria is a type of Antichrist, whether it be Tiglath-Pileser or his successors, including Sargon, who is believed to be the king of Assyria we're reading of here in Isaiah chapter 10 in the historical sense. Howbeit, he meaneth not so, or as another translation says, the king of Assyria will not understand that he's God's tool. His mind does not work that way, and Satan, when he appears as the instead of Jesus, will exalt himself above all that is called God or worship. Pride within himself, being how he became the son that perishes in the first world age. So again, he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. The destroyer being one of Satan's names, Apollyon in the Greek, and he'll destroy them spiritually at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. For he saith, Are my princes not altogether kings? Is not Calno, is Carchemish? 
is not Hamath as Arpad, is not Samaria as Damascus, the bear, the leopard, and the lion in the future is since Carchemish was a Hittite capital, and remember Esau's Hittite wives you can read of in Genesis 26, 34. Hamath we know from 1 Chronicles 2.55 more often than not means the Kenites, and finally Samaria being the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, the lion geopolitically speaking, as opposed to spiritually, which the southern kingdom of Judah was symbolic of, as we saw beginning back in chapter 7. As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, the Assyrian goes on to say, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria, the spiritual and the geopolitical there, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols. In the future is since, when Satan appears in Jerusalem, having two horns like a lamb, they're symbolic of the ecclesiastical as well as the governmental. All twelve tribes, which is to say all of Christianity, will be conquered at that time except for those of the church in Philadelphia whose names were written in the book of life of the Lamb slain who is the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords from the foundation of the world which means from the destruction of the first world age because they stood against Satan when he first rebelled. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the King of Assyria and the glory of his high look. Satan's role of any Christ, called also the false prophet, will be destroyed in the lake of fire when the true Christ returns, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. The beast there being his one world system, including his fallen angel locust army, Daniel's fourth beast, in other words, which is exclusively supernatural. And we see what will happen to those within the lion, bear, and leopard in Revelation chapter 19, verse 21. That's when their dominion is taken away, as you can see in Daniel chapter 7, verses 11 and 12, but their lives, which means their souls, are prolonged until after the thousand years are finished, when they can either follow Satan again and get cast into the lake of fire also, or stand against Satan at that time and go into the third world age, having absorbed the discipline taught by Christ throughout the thousand years through the millennial priesthood. So even after the thousand years are finished, all will perish who believe not upon the only begotten Son of God, who must first return at the seventh trumpet and destroy Satan's role of Antichrist with the brightness of his coming, as we know from Second Thessalonians Thessalonians chapter 2. For he, the Assyrian, hath said, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. And remember in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 17, God told Satan his heart was lifted up because of his beauty, and he had corrupted his wisdom by reason of his brightness. Ezekiel 28 being where Satan was given the death sentence, which is why he's called the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit and goes into perdition, called the son of perdition because he's sentenced to perish. And again, another one of his names, is Apollyon in the Greek, which means destroyer, but it comes from Greek word number 622, which means to perish, both soul and body in the lake of fire, along with whoever chooses to follow him at the end of the thousand years. And I have removed the bounds of the people, the Assyrian goes on to say, removing the borders, meaning bringing his one world religious system into being at 666 when he appears in Jerusalem, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man, robbed the Christians of their treasure in heaven when he kills them spiritually, but it's the negative part of God's plan that he will allow to happen is what the Assyrian obviously doesn't understand. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, what little truth they did have in their forehead before they were slain spiritually, as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, all but those in Philadelphia initially, but once they're delivered up, the same sort of chain reaction you can read of in the book of Acts will happen again, bringing many out of the confusion and back into God's family tree, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. In other words, no one stopped him from taking down most Christians at 666, because God will allow it to happen. He wants to know who loves him enough to stand against the enemy, and who does not. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith, this now being God's response to the Assyrian, or shall the soul magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day, the day of the Lord, beginning when the true Christ returns, when he'll destroy Satan's fallen angel locust army, and after the thousand years are finished, all who choose to be part 
part of Satan's family tree instead of God's and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth, better translated as when the sick are liquefied, in this case because of the end result of the seven last plagues that extend all the way up to the end of the thousand years, just like the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few that a child may write them, because the number of those who follow Satan will be zero after the great white throne judgment, because they'll be blotted out of existence in the lake of fire. And it shall come to pass in that day, which is the thousand-year-long day of the Lord, that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon him that smote them, Satan that is to say, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, which is one of Isaiah's son's names, as we saw back in chapter 7, verse 3, Sheer Jashub, meaning the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God, Jacob being symbolic of all who must become Israel by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ in order to go into the eternity. Christ himself is Israel, ultimately, as you can see in Isaiah chapter 49, and if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise, and in marriage to become one. That's why you see that one woman, which is the Lamb's wife in Revelation chapter 21, the New Jerusalem, going full circle from Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and that woman with the crown of 12 stars in the first world age. All were Israel then, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, and so shall it be again after the thousand years are finished, when all who offend are blotted out of existence, and everyone else goes into the eternity as Israel, the Lamb's wife, because again, in marriage, the two become one. The remnant shall return, also having the deeper meaning of the gathering together of the millennial priesthood Christ will utilize to turn those who are still Jacob, so to speak, into Israel. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness, for the Lord of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of the land. And this word consumption is the same word in the Hebrew as consummation, as you can see in Daniel 9.27 and it means complete destruction, first of Satan's role of Antichrist and his one world system when the seventh vial is poured out into the air and then after the millennium, Satan himself along with all who follow him then will be blotted out in the lake of fire. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with the rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt for yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger anger in their destruction, and the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb, and as the rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt, Oreb being the type of Antichrist written of in Judges chapter 7 that we read of in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 4. The false rock whose role of Antichrist as well as his one world system gets destroyed at the seventh trumpet, the seventh vial, and immediately after the half hour written of in the seventh seal. In other words, at 777, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, because of the anointed one, which is what Messiah means, the true rock, who is the true Jesus. He, meaning the Assyrian, which at this point was Sennacherib historically, according to the Companion Bible, but in the futurist sense, still a type of the false Christ. He has come to Aath, he has passed to Migron at Micmac, he hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ram is afraid. Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galem. Cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathoth, which was the priest city. Madmana is removed. The inhabitants of Gebam gather themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day, and he shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem, where Satan will appear as the desolate Torah once all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time. These geographical locations beginning in verse 28 are closer and closer to Jerusalem from the north and notice pointed out in the companion Bible, Gibeah is two and a half miles north of Jerusalem and it's two and a half months into the five month long hour of temptation that Satan appears in Jerusalem. Behold, 
The Lord of hosts shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. Those still part of Satan's family tree, when the true Christ returns, will be given the cup of the wine of the fierceness of God's wrath, as you can see in Revelation chapter 16, verse 19, in the seventh vial. Satan being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, who will be blotted out of existence after the thousand years are finished, along with whoever chooses to follow him again at that time. And he, meaning the Lord of hosts, shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one, better translated the mighty one, as in the true Christ, who is the tree of life, who doesn't return at all until the seventh trumpet.